All right, today I'm going to walk you through the construction of my homemade Subkick microphone. Uh, for this microphone, this prototype, I chose to use pine as the wood, and the speaker is a 6-inch carbon speaker that is designed for use in their sound reinforcement systems. Uh, the first slide you're going to see right now is one that I uh, designed in the SketchUp program. This shows the hexagon-shaped uh, speaker shell that I used, as well as the concept of the speaker hanging from the shell using bungee cords or a flexible type of cord. Next one was just simply my layout, uh, the size of it, uh, for cutting purposes. Getting down to it, the first thing that I did was cut my pieces on the uh, table saw. I cut them to about six and a half, seven inches wide. Uh, they're all the same, and it's made out of a seven and a half inch uh, thick piece of pine. I did choose select pine in this, so I wouldn't be dealing with any uh, knots or problems with that. After cutting them to width, I set my saw blade angle to a 30 degrees, and then I cut the first series of just one side. As you can see, the cuts are all done. Then I went around and flipped them over and moved the fence in a little bit and cut the second 30 degree cut on the other side. After that was done, I did a quick dry fit and you can see the hexagon shape. Everything fit together really well. Looking down on it, this gives you an idea how the speaker will sit inside the shell of the subkick. I did use a, a homemade dowling jig that I had used on a pri uh, previous project, uh, hexagon shelves that I made, so that I could reinforce the joints with some quarter-inch dowels just for added strength. Gluing it up is a pretty simple thing to do. I uh, just used a couple band clamps to keep it uh, all in place while it, the, all the glue set up. Um, after it came out of the clamps, the first thing I did was sand it down. I sanded it down to 100 grit and then to 150 grit both inside and out. I did a quick test fit of it right here to make sure that it would work. I put my eye hooks in and I used the bungee cords, which I had to shorten a little bit, and drilled a couple of extra holes in the rim of the speaker so that it can hang in the middle. And you see here that it fits in really well. At this point here, I did want to uh, make sure it works. So before I went any further with the actual construction, I did wire it up really quick and take it in and do a quick test on a bass guitar cabinet as well as with a djembe drum. Uh, I was pretty happy with the sound I got just from that. After I was done with that, I decided that I needed to do a stand for it. I had looked at several different options, and I even went out and bought a cheap, inexpensive, used um, snare drum stand, but I decided that I wanted to go with something that was more custom, and being the type of person that likes to build things, I designed my own stand for it, and here you see the initial concept for it. It's a pretty easy design, really just takes up uh, about three pieces of wood, um, a fourth one for a support, but first thing I did was cut them all to length, as well as to width that I needed. Uh, I did connect the uh, two bottom pieces, the support pieces, using a half lamp, jo half lap joint. Uh, in this situation, uh, because of my reduced shop size right now, I didn't want to dig out a lot of tools, so I just used my table saw to nibble away the waste wood on both the long and short piece, and they fit together really nice. Quick test fit. I did make a quick support to, uh, just to add a little bit of extra strength to the support going up. I did use dowels to connect the uh, uprights to the base. I'm not a big fan of mechanical fasteners. I usually try to use uh, dowels or some sort of woodworking uh, joinery when I do stuff like this. Next thing I did was drill holes. Uh, after I figured out the uh, width of them, I drilled two 5 16 inch holes through the shell for the sub kick um, so that the 5 16 carriage bolts will fit through, and this is what's going to mount it to the stand. Uh, real quick dry fit shows how it sits on the stand. Looks like it's going to work pretty well. While I had things gluing up, I decided to tackle the um, cord jack, the cable jacks, the XLR. So what I had done is at Radio Shack, I had bought a female uh, jack that will mount onto a plate. I was unable to find a male one. And so I just got a piece of uh, eighth inch aluminum and drilled out a hole in the aluminum so that the jack would fit through it. And then I marked uh, the two mounting holes for the jack plate as well as uh, the four holes where I would screw it to the sub kick. Um, once I had everything uh, polished down and, uh, and 
clean on the aluminum, I use some rivets to mount the jack to the plate. And there you see it uh, kind of on a test fit with a sub kick, which at this point here has uh, one or two coats of primer on it. Um, next up, I actually I use some spray lacquer, uh, high gloss uh, spray lacquer to finish the sub kick and the base with. After it was all done and dried up, then I uh, wired everything up. Uh, first thing I did was mount the speaker in using the bungee cables. I did put a little bit further back than I had originally done on the initial test. Uh, so it's about an inch, uh, inch and a half into the uh, shell. Another angled view of it right there. Here you can see the back of it. Uh, a little detail of the wiring. What I did for this one is I just cut off about a 12 inch piece of microphone cable from the cable I was using for this and used it to wire directly from the speaker to the jack on the inside. Wanted it to look nice and clean so I just kept the, IE, the shielding and the outer shell on. Here you see the outside with the jack mount uh, plate in place. And here you see the cable that I made. Um, all I did was I said cut off the end of the cable and then I added an extra male XLR end to the cable. Um, worked really well and it was quick and easy to do. Again, I got the jacket radio shack. And here you see the sub kick with the cable on it.